really captures the heart of what I want to, uh, to share with you today. We're going to be talking about taking up our shield of faith, church, uh, because we are in a very real battle. Amen? See, I've had more times than I can actually care to count when I have found myself having taken a, taken a, a step forward in my faith, when I have made a decision to go deeper with God, when, you know, maybe at a, you know, you know had, a, had a high experience, you know, kind of a, you know, coming out of a camp meeting or, um, you know, being off on a mission trip or something like that, where I've had so many times where I've experienced a high and have come back to find myself absolutely under assault from the enemy. Anybody else? Yeah. You know, see... Friends, if, if you've made a decision to live by faith, what we've been talking about over the course of this series, if you've made a decision to live out this everyday faith and to really to, to live a life that honors God and to walk in a personal relationship with Jesus, please hear me very carefully, then you have marked yourself. You have a target on your back. Trust me when I say this. If you have made a decision to go deeper in your walk with God or to, to move forward at all in your relationship with Jesus, the enemy has your fortress under attack. See, the enemy is sure to bring the battle to your doorstep, isn't he? Say no more than Jesus is Lord and it will enrage the enemies of God. Say no more than for me and my house we will serve the Lord and your tent will be under attack. See, friends, anymore, when I see things happening around me, either in my life or in the lives of my family members and my, my wife, my children, or even in the lives of the congregation that I am very privileged and blessed to be able to pastor, I try very, very hard to pay close attention to the nature of what is really happening behind the assault. See, before you too quickly write off the difficult things in your life that you're experiencing as mere events in life, because that's what we have a tendency of doing, of just, man, you know, kind of licking our wounds and just kind of seeing it as just, as just life that's happening to me and happening around me. Listen, friends, it can be a valuable thing to check in with God and to ask for a special lens or special lenses of discernment to see what's happening in the spiritual realm all around you. See, Jesus said to Simon Peter, he said to Simon, 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 Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you, Simon, so that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. One of, one of America's greatest Christian leaders throughout the 20th century, C. Peter Wagner, he says this. He said, certain people, such as shamans, witch doctors, Practitioners of Eastern religions, New Age gurus, or professors of the occult on university faculties are examples of the kind of people who may have a better, a much more extensive knowledge of the spirit world than most Christians have. See, an important part of living out our everyday faith and living victoriously is to understand the nature of the battle that we are facing. I mean, we want to be victorious, don't we? We want to live out this everyday faith that we've started on. And, and friends, I, I want this for us, for our congregation. We, we, we spur you on. We encourage you. And it's pretty awesome at times to see people just kind of putting their anchors down, right? And making a declaration or being inspired and encouraged in a moment of faith when they come and then they leave. And I see the enemy just assault their life. And sometimes some of us being very oblivious to the fact of what is actually even happening to me or to us. St. Teresa said this, she said, whenever my enemy provokes me to battle, I try to behave like a soldier. See, my desire in bringing this to your awareness isn't, isn't at all to make you afraid or actually to make you even look behind every bush, bush to see a demon or something like that. But it is really to bring an awareness to us. It's to, it's to remind you, listen church, that if you are in Christ, the victory is yours. 
For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against the enemies to give you victory. Amen, church? Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. Listen, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. For the Lord takes delight in His people. He crowns the humble with victory, church. Listen, friends. We fight from a position of victory, not defeat. But so many times what happens is as we walk through life almost as though we're defeated already. But God has brought us to a point to where we need to understand we fight from victory. We don't fight from defeat. If God has made us victors, then it's a matter of staying victorious and learning to have wisdom in the battle. We need to ask God for discernment regarding the battle, friends. And we trust me, and I say this again, you are under assault. You are in a battle. And we have to pay attention to it and understand this. We need to ask God, God, give me discernment for what is happening around me, for what's happening in me, for what's happening to my family, what's happening around me, to my, to my friends. 1 John 4, 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but listen, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. We need to be people who have discernment, friends. Listen, friends, the attacks are real. The enemy attacks those who take steps to walk a new life with Christ. And the enemy is inflicting severe casualties on many in the church today. He's leading people astray, causing many to embrace lifestyles of sin, and some even to leave the faith altogether. Paul describes what's happening all around us in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Listen to what he says. He says this, So I tell you this, and I insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, listen to what happens. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of all kinds of greed. Isn't that the picture of the church, the world today, church? And in many times, in many places, in many ways, even can be a picture of the church. But God has called us to live as victorious. God has called us to live different. Amen? Amen? He goes on and he says this. He says, listen, but that, however, is not the way of, lear- of life that you learned when you heard about Jesus Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life. Listen, church, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Listen, friends, this is the battle that we are in. This is the battle that, listen, so many people are losing. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to lose the battle. I want to get through victorious. How many of you want to get through victorious? Amen? I mean, it's a very real spiritual battle that we are in. And Paul here, he describes this and he gives this, this picture of two different people. You know, the person, this first person is separated from, from God, darkened in their understanding, separated from the life that is in God. Listen, separated from that victorious life that we said, we fight from victory. Amen? See, but there's, he says, the, the, those who, who, he says, you should not live like the Gentiles do, or those people who are not walking in relationship with Christ. He says they, they've, been, they've been influenced and they have futility of thinking. And not only that, they have ignorance due to the hardening, listen, the hardening of their hearts. And they've lost all sensitivity. And due to the fact that they've had futility futility in their thinking, they've hardened their hearts, they've lost sensitivity, what has happened? They've given over to every type of sensuality. Listen, this is the progressive, what happens when a person is not aware of the battle that they're in. And what God is doing is He's coaxing us to live out this everyday faith and we can preach week in and week out. Listen, live a life of everyday faith and we can all raise our hands and say, yeah, I want to live a life of everyday faith. But here's the deal. If you don't learn and if you and I don't learn how to actually fight the battle, we will lose and we become this. 
But God has given us the victory. And listen, these things are written so that we make a choice in our lives which person I'm going to be. And so we've been invited to understand how do we actually do this? How do we live a life that is on this side, the new life, the new life of God, who, who we have a new way of understanding, that, that we live this new life that, that is not captured in all of this, you know, this nonsense. How do we do this? Paul tells us just a, a couple of chapters later in Ephesians chapter 6, he talks about the armor of God. Listen to what he says. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after, after having done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, he says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And in in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, he says, that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the Gospel. For I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Listen, friends, this is what I want to share with you today. I believe that God is is calling us to be people who live from a point of victory. That we don't live as people who have been defeated. And the way that we do that is we understand God wants to help us win the everyday faith battle. But if we're going to win the battle, we have to first and foremost, we have to decide to defend ourselves against spiritual attack. Listen, you cannot just sit by idly and expect to win this battle, church. We have to make a decision that you're going to defend yourself against spiritual attack. Because again, I say, when I see things all around us, listen, it's not just life that's happening to us, it's the enemy attacking us. See, God wants to do incredible, amazing things in our lives and through us. But how many times do we get knocked off the path? Do we get sidetracked? Why? Because the enemy comes in and tries to destroy what God is doing inside of you. We've got to decide that we're going to defend ourselves. That's why the Scripture says, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. You can't any longer stand by and be passive in your spiritual battle. The armor is needed, friends. The belt of truth is needed around your waist. You stand in truth. The breastplate of righteousness you put on. You, put, you have your feet fitted with the gospel of peace. You have the shield of faith up. The helmet of salvation on. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And you pray in the Spirit. And you ask discernment. You defend yourself. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Peter says, be alert. Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Listen, resist him! Standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers... Listen, you're not alone in this, are you? The family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of trials. Listen, this is the same thing. I'm going through it. You're going through it. The person sitting next to you is going through it. Listen, if you are sucking air today and you're a believer in Jesus, you're going through it. You're not by yourself. This isn't just my battle. It's not just Lynn's battle or Hunter's battle. It's, listen, it's all of our battles. We have to be alert. We have to be sober-minded. We have to remember, listen, what it is that is happening around us and even in us. Just because you're a believer doesn't make you immune to it. It actually makes you a target. Everyday faith involves spiritual warfare. God wants to help us win the battle. Listen, but again, if we're going to win the battle, we have to, number two, 
we have to identify the fiery arrows. See, sometimes I think we read Scripture and we just kind of look at it as this rhetorical thing, but in reality, we need to sometimes really step back and really consider what it is that the Scripture says. Take up the shield of faith, he says, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. I want you to really kind of think about this reality of warfare. Think about the spiritual warfare that happens around us. And one of the things that we need to do as believers is we've got to begin to learn how to identify the arrows, the fiery arrows that are coming your way. See, it's not enough to know that you're in a battle and to decide to defend yourself. You have to know your enemy's weapons. We have to be able to identify what will be thrown at you. If you walk with God, what's coming your way? See, Paul describes what the enemy uses, what the enemy throws at us as flaming arrows. And listen, flaming arrows are used for two purposes, aren't they? First of all, the first purpose is to penetrate their victim. He fires off flaming arrows at us. What? Why? To penetrate us. To penetrate. To, to, to do us in. To, to shoot us through. To penetrate our mind. To penetrate our heart. To get to us. To penetrate our emotions. To penetrate our, our, our very lives. Listen, so flaming arrows are used to penetrate. Secondly, understand this. Flaming arrows are also used to set ablaze anything surrounding the target. That's why they're on fire. Is to set ablaze anything around the target, church. Listen, you might be the primary target, but the enemy will attempt to set fire to everything around you to defeat, to destroy, or to discourage you. See, what are some of the flaming arrows the enemy uses? The enemy uses lies. The enemy will, will, will shoot arrows of lies at you. In fact, Jesus said, you know, the, he's speaking to the, to the Pharisees, he says, your, your father is, is, is Satan, he's a, and he's a liar, and he's been a liar from the very beginning. See, he uses lies. He, he speaks all kinds of lies into our, into our minds, into our hearts. You know, the enemy, he, the enemy will try to lie to you at any moment you turn around. He'll lie to you about, about, about what people think about you. He'll stick lies in you about, about you know, some, an event that happened and, and get you thinking a way that, that, that's wrong. He will lie in all kinds of ways. See, it's not just lying about, about the Word of God. He'll lie to you about all kinds kinds of things to get you off track and to stop stop you from living a victorious life there's all kinds of lies he'll lie to you and tell you you can't do it you can't do this i can't get through this i can't get through it it's too big i've got too much pressure i got too much stuff going on he'll lie to people i've seen it happen where he lies to someone i i can't pursue god anywhere i've got i'm way too busy you're not too busy that's a lie from the enemy you're never too busy to pursue god let me tell you listen you're never too busy to pursue god you're never too busy to be used by God. You're never, ever too busy. You know where that comes from? The liar. He's a liar. He lies to us. Why? So that he can defeat us. He can discourage us. He can, he can you know, distract us from being the person that God's created us, us to be. He lies to us about, about our identity, about our, our worth to God. And so we start walking around and we hold our head down. Well, you know what? I'm just, I'm a loser. I'm always going to be a loser. This is just the way that life is going to be. I never, I don't amount to, to much. I, I'm not going to be what God wants me to be. God must really not love me very much. And so God, He's really not for me. He must be against me. Those are all lies. Those are lies. Listen, He'll throw those arrows all day long. Understand, that's one of the chief arrows that He uses. He lies. He's the father of lies. That's one of the most common arrows that He will throw at you. I mean, yeah, we might have times when we are down, when, we're, you know, when, when we don't have much strength because we are busy, but guess what? Those who wait on the Lord will, will renew their strength. 
And it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We just sang about that. See, the enemy is a liar. Because we're not supposed to do this thing in our own strength anyway. Amen? We're supposed to do it in His strength and in His power. So we've got to be very, very aware. He is a liar. He is a thief. Another thing that he does is he, he's a condemner. He, he condemns us and, and he speaks things into our lives that causes us to, to, to feel condemnation. But Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, listen to what this says. Revelation 12, 10 reminds us, then I heard a loud voice, now come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of your God and the authority of His Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sister who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Listen, He is an accuser. He accuses us. In fact, sometimes the way that He accuses us is He, is he, he accuses us that, it, you know, I, I just, I, I can't really give to you know, be used by God because it's, it's not going to be enough. Therefore, I'll just stand back and not you know, really give myself. It's not enough. Listen, God wants to use whatever it is that we can give to Him. Whatever level of, of, of ability we have. Because it's not our ability, it's about the heart. It's about our availability. And so how many times do we, as people, we make ourselves unavailable to God Unavailable to God because we feel we're not able enough. We're not equipped. Well, I'm not as equipped as, as, as Pastor Greg. I'm not as equipped as, as Vic. And so some, we kinda, some stand in the shadows. Always satisfied to stand in the shadows because I'm, just, I'm, I'm not as able as somebody else. Listen, that's, that's the accuser. You hear me? That's the accuser. Not only is he a liar, he accuses us of not being enough. He is an accuser. He, he, he condemns us. He, another arrow that he throws at us is one that we're very, very familiar with. He, he corrupts us. He, he, he sends arrows of temptation our way, doesn't he? Kind of like the apples of delight as, he, as we see in, in Genesis when, when Satan stands before Adam and Eve and, and says to Eve, you know, Eve says, I, I can't eat from the fruit from the, from the tree. And, and Satan says, well, you know, did God really say that you can't eat you know, from any tree? And she says, whoa, wait a minute, no. He says, you know, I, we can't eat from this tree. And then he turns it around and says, well, no, it, actually, if you eat this, this is really going to be good. This is really going to be good. It, it, God tell, told you this because if you eat of it, you will not die, but you will become as God. And so one of the arrows that he throws, listen, is temptation and, and, and corruption perverts the truth, perverts what God's words. He sows confusion. I mean, one of the, one of the flaming arrows that the enemy you know, throws at us is confusion. But God does not give us a spirit of confusion, right? But a, but a sound mind. So at times, I mean, you think about that. Be aware of this. There are times when even I'll be watching, I'll be watching, you know, TV, and 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 and, and there's so many messages right now that are coming across, and I just I gotta sit back for a moment, especially because in a culture today that they're saying that 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 good is evil and evil is good. Oh my word, it can become extremely confusing, can't it? Listen, if you think that you're above the possibility of being taking an arrow from the enemy when it comes to confusion, do not overlook the power of confusion that the enemy sows. I mean, there are right now, there's a congregation recently, I just read about this, a congregation that, that, that left um, the Assembly of God denomination. Over the, they said, well, you know what? We, we, we're going to start affirming the LGBTQ um, lifestyle. We don't believe that, any, that, that the Scripture actually teaches against it. Well, you know why that happened? You know why that happened? It's not because the Word of God isn't very explicit. The Word of God is very explicit. Listen, that's a sin. It's sinful. And we are supposed to, listen, lose, leave any type of sinful lifestyle. Amen? Come on. But we live in a culture today that is confusing people. 
and it's moving people away from a lifestyle that God wants them to have. It's bringing confusion to the point that literally spiritual leaders are leading their people down a road of destruction and embracing confusion, church. We have got to be aware that one of the arrows that the enemy sends is confusion. Confusion especially over the issues of what is right and what is wrong, what is godly and what is evil and wicked. Another thing that the enemy sows is relational conflict. He, he, he sows seeds of division. He'll bring in and he'll worm his way in and try to divide a husband and a wife. Haven't we see that today? Where he'll try to divide husbands and wives. He'll try to divide parents and their children. He'll try to divide people who are try, who, who they're, they're on the same team, but then they end up fighting against each other. That's one of the ways that the enemy works as well. It's also it's helpful to know not only what types of arrows it is that he uses, but the direction the arrows fly. So there are times when the enemy he throws, he, he flings his arrows at our physical being, doesn't he? There are times, friends, when we, when we take an assault from the enemy, he, he assaults our physical being, literally. There are times when he assaults even our bodies with sickness, with fatigue, with pain. Do not think that that always is just something that's a natural thing. There are times when the enemy literally afflicts, afflicts our physical beings. There are also times that the, the direction of the arrows is at our emotions. Where he will assault our emotions and he will, he will bring all kinds of, of weird... Have you ever had this, a, a moment where it just seems like a dark cloud has come over top of you? You ever been there before? Dark cloud just like rolls in and you're like, listen, it doesn't add up at all. Life is okay. You know, everything's fine. You know, and, and what happens is, is this dark cloud rolls in and we're like, what in the world? Where'd that come from? Well, let me tell you where that comes from many times. It comes from your enemy. Who's attacking your emotions? There are many times when sadness or depression or listen, have you ever had moments when you're just, you're going along and you're just mad at the entire world? You're angry. You're angry. You're angry at your spouse. You're angry at your, at your friends. You're angry at your neighbor. You're angry at your neighbor's dog. You're angry at the preacher. I mean, you're angry at everybody and everything. Have you ever wondered about that? Let me tell you why. It's because the enemy assaults our emotions at times. And even uses a spirit of anger. If he can keep you angry, he can steal your joy. Or how about the emotion of fear? Fear all of a sudden. You're walking along. You're doing life. Jesus is good. He's Savior. He's on the throne. But all of a sudden, we are gripped with a spirit of fear. We're afraid. We're afraid of, of our shadow. We're afraid of people. We're afraid all of a sudden of bad things happening. We're afraid of, of death. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid to take steps of faith. We're afraid of everything around us. You ever wonder where that comes from? Listen, it comes from the enemy. Who attacks us in our emotions? How about this? The enemy also sends arrows to our mental being, to our mental thoughts, to the thoughts. Remember, we talked about the futility of their thinking. The enemy will attack your thoughts. He'll, he'll, bring, he'll bring against you thoughts of condemnation. All of a sudden, you'll be thinking and, the, and you'll, feel, you'll, you'll think thoughts that are, that are not of God, that are just like all of a sudden that are there. He'll bring condemnation into your thoughts. He'll bring, he'll bring confusion into your thoughts. He'll bring, he'll bring overwhelming thoughts and get you spinning around. He'll bring, he'll bring um, attacks against thoughts about your, your self-esteem and who you are in, in Christ. He'll, he'll bring thoughts about, about failure. He'll, he'll even bring at times thoughts about suicide. Don't just think that those things just happen. 
The enemy would love nothing more than for us to kill ourselves. We'll have suicidal thoughts that will come in or thoughts that are, are judging other people. Or even send sometimes thoughts, listen, that, that people are judging us. Well, why does he do that? When they're not even thinking about us. He does that so we will live separate from people. A house divided cannot stand. So he'll send all kinds of crazy thoughts into our minds and our hearts. He'll send thoughts that people are looking down on you when they actually are. Or another way that the arrows fly is, is right directly into our, into our spiritual being. Temptations, temptations at the core of, of who we are to, to make us to desire, to want to do things that are that completely, this isn't even me. Where did this come from? Why did I want to do this? You ever had that? If you were to be honest, you would. We've all had that. Driving the, wait a minute, that's the old Wayne. Where'd that come from? I can tell you where it came from. The enemy. Who's assaulting my soul, assaulting my spiritual being. Or how about a relational being? The, the enemy will literally hurl flaming arrows at our relationships around us and, and, and will attack, you know, will cause arguments, will cause offense to be felt or offense to be taken by, by people. He'll, he'll, he'll cause misunderstandings. To, all of a sudden, he'll bring agitation in a home and agitation in relationships. He'll work in there to try to develop Divide people. He'll even at times put people, he'll plant people just to be a division inside of a, a, a group of relationships. We have to learn, church, to identify the arrows. Amen? we got to make the decision. We're going to defend ourselves. We have to make the decision and understand. We have to identify the arrows. And then the third thing. Plain and simply, we have to start using our shields. See, sometimes I think what we do is we read this and we're like, wow, that really sounds awesome. Cool. We've got the helmet of salvation. Cool. We've got the breastplate of righteousness. Cool. We've got the sword of the Spirit. Cool. And feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. Cool. You know, we think all of those things. And, you know, and, and then, you know, the shield, the shield of faith. Awesome. Then we walk out the door. <laughs> And we get pow, 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 you know, assaulted by the enemy, and we don't learn to use our armor. We don't learn to use the shield of faith that God has given us. Listen, to be victorious, use the shield. He says, take up the shield with which you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil. We fight from a position of victory, not defeat, church. We've got armor that can defeat the enemy. I mean, we need some, some shield training, don't we? To learn how to pick up those shields and learn how to actually use them. That's one of the reasons why Pastor Karen, she's got an incredible small group that's starting up in March. That's a Tony Evans video on spiritual warfare. You, you, on, on using the armor of God and being victorious. If you haven't signed up for a small group yet, listen, don't listen to the devil who's a liar who says, I don't have time for a small group. Because you do. Because we've all been given the same amount of time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We all have time. That's coming down hard on me. That's right. No excuses. I'm tired of the enemy kicking our butts. We want to live victorious. We want to be victorious. Then we've got to learn how to, how to win. And part of that is, man, get plugged into a small group. Get plugged into Karen's small group. Learn how to use, use your shield. So let's talk about that for just a moment. 
Listen, how do we, we have to take it up. Learn how to use your shield so the enemy doesn't pick us off one by one. How do you use it? You hold it up. First of all, you hold it up between you and your, you and the enemy. You've got to hold it up between you and the fiery arrows. Everybody lift up your arms. You know how a preacher make me do something weird. But hold up your arms. Hold up your, that's exactly, listen, that's the posture of holding up the shield and preparing yourself for the onslaught of the arrows. This isn't make make believe. This isn't pretend. We've got to learn how to pick up our shield and actually fight with the enemy. You've got to hold it up. When the mental arrows come, you insist. Listen, this is so absolutely important. When the arrows come and and the enemy assaults your thinking, hold up your shield and insist that every thought that comes into your mind stands before Christ and the truth. It says we hold captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. That is what it means to hold up the shield of faith. Every thought that comes across, you hold up your shield of faith. You say, does this jive with what God says? Does this, the, and you make it obedient. You hold that every thought. You say, no, wait a minute. I'm holding this thought captive and I'm making it obedient to Christ. It's got to be obedient. The enemy doesn't have victory over you unless you let him. You hold up the shield between you and the mental error, errors, you know, arrows. You, you combat, listen church, you combat every false thought with the truth of who God is and what God's Word says. you got to combat this. you got to hold that thing up and you gotta, you got to protect your heart. Why? Because we can have our hearts hardened very, very quickly, can't we? You've got to hold up that shield between, between the you and, and the enemy's arrows and make sure that they don't penetrate your emotions. You declare in faith, listen, that God is greater than your emotions. You get angry, you hold up the shield of faith and you say, listen, God is great, greater than the spirit of anger. You start fearing, you hold up the shield of faith and you say, God is greater than the spirit of fear. You hold the shield up and you stand strong. You stand firm against those assaults on your emotions. When physical things begin to come into your life, listen, don't just lay down in bed and be passive with it. Listen, you stand strong. You lift up the shield of faith and say, my God is my healer. My body is His. That's why the Scripture says the prayer of faith will make the sick person well. You hold up the shield of faith. Say they say cancer. So they say leukemia. So they say disease. Whatever. Hold up the shield of faith and say, no, you know what? My God, my God, my body is His. He's the great physician. He'll be the one that determines my, my health. And you trust and you believe Him. Amen? When the enemy assaults your relationships, he assaults your home, which he will. I've experienced it in my own family at times. You have children growing up, and you wonder, what in the world? Where did this come from? Oh my goodness. Raising teenagers can be fun, can't it? You know, and you wonder, where in this, you, what you do is you hold up the shield of faith between yourself and the enemy, and you hold it up, and you get your family behind you, and you start holding up that shield of faith. And you say, you can't have my family. You can't have my son. You can't can't have my daughter you can't have my grandchild you can't have us and you stand strong with the shield of faith and you you hold it up there and you hold it strong as he comes in and he tries to break things up and hurt people bring division and when the enemy comes in and he starts attacking and throwing the arrows against your spirit being and tempting you to be less than what it is that God created you to be. Listen, because He's breastplate of righteousness. You know what that means? Not just a positional righteousness of Jesus has made me perfect in Him because He's forgiven all my past sins. He's forgiven my sins. That's true, but He's also given us practical holiness. That means, in other words, when sin comes, when temptation comes our way, we hold up the shield of faith and say, you know, I don't have to give in to that. I don't have to live that old lifestyle anymore. God has called me to be a person who lives, listen, righteous 
in the right path, in the right way, and you hold up the shield of faith and say, I'm not going to live that way anymore. By the power of God, by His power and His Spirit. Amen, church? Come on, I don't hear too many amens on that. Amen, church? We are not going to live the way that we used to. Jesus came to not only forgive us, but to give us power over sin. So God has called us to be people who hold up and start using the, the shield of faith. Friends, the problem is that we are letting the arrows hit the targets instead of our shields. If it hits our, your mind, then it's already too late. If it's already hit your heart, it's already penetrated too far. And I'm not saying to the point that it's irreparable, but I'm just saying further than what it is that God intended and God wants, and why allow yourself to inflict, have an injury afflicted to your thinking or to your heart. See, if it penetrates your spirit, it's already gone too deep. We have got to start getting the shield between us and the arrows. So we've got to get our eyes up and start seeing the arrows like what was on the video. And they looked up and they saw the onslaught of all of the arrows coming. See the arrow. Keep your eye on the arrow and watch for more. Quickly move and get the shield up. And listen, don't turn your back on the enemy. Don't ever turn your back on the enemy. The shield is for a forward facing posture. The movie 1917 that's out at the movie theaters right now. A uh, real quick spoiler alert. If you're going to see it, you'll want to close your ears here. I apologize for this. But there is a scene where two soldiers who are on an important mission that are going to save 1,600 soldiers, they pull an enemy pilot out of a downed fighter airplane. And they have a great heart towards somebody who meant them wrong. They pull them out. And the next thing you know, the one goes to get water for him. He turns around to see the enemy combat lying, who had been lying on the ground stabbing through one of the, uh, the, the other soldier. He let his guard down. Friends, okay, Joel, you can listen now. <laughs> Friends, you're good. <laughs> Friends, you can't. Please hear me. You can't be a nice guy with the darkness and let your guard down and think that you won't be harmed by the enemy. God has given us the victory. Everyday faith. Victorious people. He's called us to fight from victory. But we have to learn how to, how to fight this battle. We have to learn to not be passive anymore. Thoughts, emotions, relationships, temptations, all those things that whew, fire your arrows. What's our posture? Hold up the shield of faith. Amen? Let's pray.